Good afternoon and welcome to All About Animals. Uh, I am Sherry Gratitor and my guest today is Susan Nack, who is the founder, runner, participant, uh, programmer, and general of Great Factotum, along with her partners, the dogs, of an organization called Adventures with Bailey. And Bailey's kind of sleeping over there right now because unfortunately Bailey has developed a malignancy and is not doing well. Which is tragic because, as you said, he was your first when you got started. He is our ambassador, and he was always the most gregarious dog we've ever had. He's a wonderful dog. Yep. He's a sweet, wonderful guy. Yes, he is fabulous. Yes. And it's, when you see them sick like this, it puts a hole in your heart. There's no question. Truly. No question. Let's talk about the organization and the kinds of things that you do because they are varied and impressive. Very much so. Um, I think one of our main goals is we work with homeless, at-risk teenagers. They generally come from the Allendale Association. They're largely wards of the state, which is why we don't have photographs ever of mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. um, because there's no permission to be gained from any parent. Um, the dogs provide companionship to them, teach them um, life skills, and generally just ha have compassion for the, the girls. And a girl can come in and have had such a bad day, and I'll say, take one dog and go to that corner, have a chat with him, tell him everything that went wrong today because he can't tell anybody else. And they come back five minutes later, and everything's right with the world all because over again. Because they've unburdened, which is beautiful. <laughs> That's right. It's just beautiful. It's fabulous. We go to a few different grade schools where kindergarten through fifth graders read to the dogs, but they're not at-risk readers. They're typically chosen for behavior modification issues. Um, some of them because they're terrified of dogs. We have one seven-year-old girl we've been working with for two years now whose mom at four years old told her, you either need to buy this child a dog or get her around safe dogs because her, it will change her life if she stays this fearful of dogs. So we've worked with her every week for two years. Um, we have lots of individuals that contact us. I had a grandma call us um, about a year ago almost saying that her special needs granddaughter was hit by a car trying to get away from a leashed, well-behaved dog walking home from school with the grandmother present. And the girl was just so terrified. She now walks Sunny all by herself. It's Beautiful. fabulous. She brushes him, lays on him, walks him. Beautiful. Yes. Um, our littlest dog, our Pamapoo Ellie Bell, is capable of working hospice. So she goes and helps people have a different day, maybe, or smile a little bit. And, um, and it's remarkable how a, draw, a dog will draw out someone. And who they is talk. Sad. I, the, the, the staff reports back to me that they will talk about that dog visit for days and days afterwards. And it's only a 10 or 15 minute visit, but it does. It changes, you know. Their days. But now you said something to me that, that I thought was fascinating, and we were talking about your large dogs, your Leonbergers primarily. Yes. And you said they're too sensitive to go to hospice. They are. They absolutely understand what hospice is. They are sad for days when they come home. They're fine while they're there. Even if I keep them there for an hour or an hour and a half, um, they treat the patients exactly like I would ask them to treat the patients. They get in the car, and they don't even want to get out of the car and then they lay around and are sad for days. Yeah, we have to give credit to our dogs because they do feel. Absolutely. And they do hurt. And, you know, I have to make sure that I'm watching how they're feeling. Of course, of course, because your mom. Well, there are other people I see bringing their dogs into hospice who, at least in my opinion, perhaps shouldn't be. So I think as a responsible pet owner and mama, that's my job. Yeah. And your dogs watch. are certified therapy dogs. They, they absolutely not? are. Yes. Uh, well, of our six, four are certified therapy dogs. Two were just rescued the first of the year, and they were not well socialized, so we're work working on that. Yeah, that is definitely a work in progress. And I would say that one will probably be capable, and one may not be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. And that's fine. That's right. And that's fine. Um, there was something that we talked about. About a year ago on the show, we, we did a program about um, blood donors and transfusions at the Veterinary Emergency Hospital in Grays Lake, 
Your dogs are blood donors. Our, all of our big dogs are blood donors. Bailey obviously can't anymore. No. But Bailey was actually the superstar for seven years because he has universal blood. And so all of the dogs donate blood every eight weeks. Bailey would occasionally get a call to come on an emergency basis. Um, we actually just recently got a call. They had a Leo, a Leonberger there, and we took all of our four Leonbergers up <laughs> to donate blood for the sick Leonberger, which mm -hmm. is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, Ellie's too little. She's mm -hmm. under 50 pounds, so she cannot donate, though she joins us on every visit as a pack, Yeah, because we travel as a pack. And it's something that people don't realize that and you stop and think about it, it's painfully obvious that if a dog has a disease or if a dog is in an accident and the dog is bleeding, they're going to have or to replace a, the blood. Or he has even surgery. Even that, surgery. Yeah. And, and he he nobody ever stops to think, where does the blood come, come from? from? Yes. And, and, and it is donor dogs, and they always need donor and dogs. And I'll tell you, it is the best program for an owner on the planet. Every eight weeks, my dogs get a head-to-toe checkup. I know they're healthy. Um, they do the annual heartworm blood screening free of charge and fax the results to a regular vet. Every time a dog donates blood, $25 goes into our bank. So while ba Bailey's illness could have cost us a lot of money, it's just reducing our bank because we have many thousands of dollars I'm built sure. up in our I'm bank. Sure. Um, and in general, it's just a great thing. I love the fact most of all that when my dogs go into a vet's office, they think they're kind of at home, they're, you know? <laughs> because when you walk into AETC... Which is the animal emergency clinic. <clears throat> they want to be known as the treat people, not the needle people. So they just start doling out treats. <laughs> and so the dogs think it's home and yeah, it's and all good fun. Not only good, not only home, but man, it's good and there's good stuff there. Yeah, that's right. It is. But that's something that, that, that people should think about truthfully, that, that uh, they always need more blood donors. There aren't enough. And cats, cats can donate yeah. too. Cats and dogs. Absolutely. And I, what is it, two blood types for cats, I believe they said? It's, it's 16 for dogs. Wow. I'm uncertain about cats. And it's 16 in like that humans are eight. Four plus the... The, eight, are, the rhesus factors. Correct. Yeah. Um, so dogs are twice as many and I'm uncertain about the cats. I think you said two, but I'm not sure. Uh, but the, that's, a, that's a super neat thing. Now, You've got a note here about special needs adults. Yes. Um, in particular, we go work at, um, with the early, uh, ELA, the... I don't I, know I don't, what ELA I, is. I don't, I can't I don't know either. You. I can't remember. But what is um, it? Special needs people that essentially go to daycare. Uh -huh. So they are in a facility all day long, but they go home to their homes at night. And we, you know, they do arts and crafts. They have day trips. They do all sorts of things. They, we typically take the dogs there, though we've scheduled our first trip, trip for them to come here so they could see the dogs oh, wow. at home oh, wow. and meet the horses. Mm -hmm. And that's a, good, that's a good segue to the horses, mm -hmm. because I do want to talk about the horses. How many horses do you have? We have three Icelandic horses. Okay. We have mom, dad, and a baby, who is now three. Mm -hmm. um, I've been riding the adults, so we're going to start a riding program. Uh, we will eventually get certified to do that. And handicapped have, riding. Is sure, special doing. needs. When we say riding program, we're saying special needs, handicapped, whatever. Yeah. And um, the I don't, Icelandic horses are to the equine world like Leonbergers are to the canine world. They're mellow, they're calm, but they're the opposite in size. They're smaller than a standard horse in size. And yet they've got that big neck. Big neck, kind of in the winter, they grow so much hair, they look prehistoric. Yes. And they're just wonderful. They're fabulous. Uh, we just recently had a party here for family and had many small children running around, and the horses love to be by them. That's fantastic. Yes. But yeah, this is this is the new direction that you're trying to move. Correct. And it's funding that stops us only. Right. And as you hear me say, generally when we do a not for profit, and you'll hear it again <laughs> here. The funding has very much dried up with the problems that the economy has. It's real hard to bring in the dollars to run these programs. Right now, you're looking at a program that is helping the sick and dying. She does work with Alzheimer's people. You're talking about special needs kids. 
You're talking about behavior problem kids in reading. You're talking about homeless teens and at-risk teens. You're talking about a broad spectrum of people that one woman's organization is reaching out to, plus all the dogs and cats that are getting blood from her dogs. Well, and, and I think that that is one of our issues with funding is that kind of no one can claim us because we're not just, you know, an Alzheimer's program or just a reading program or just one specific thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it stands on the brink of starting a program now. You were talking about a, pro a driving program as well. Absolutely, and we're still we're excited about the driving program. We actually just finally purchased the cart, mm -hmm. and we'll start training soon, hopefully. Yeah, and but but all these things cost, and you kind of sit on the brink of doing them Absolutely. because were the funds to come in a little more readily, it would be a whole lot easier to do. Yes. Um, with two minutes left yes. to talk, which is a very short time. Yes. Uh, a couple of things. Are there programs that you're doing that people can call you to help them with? And if so, what are they? Well, interestingly enough, we one of the things that we love actually most of all is just help rushing mm -hmm. dogs and horses. We had a, um, a young boy man make his uh, house bar mitzvah project this summer, and he is now he made his bar mitzvah, so he's not coming anymore. Oh my goodness. So we have lots of hair. <laughs> so you're looking for volunteers. <clears throat> Absolutely, volunteers that can help us um, either care for the animals, or we, as you know, have run bake sales at the farmer's markets. Mm -hmm. Anybody that could help us bake or help us out it at the market for those four hours on a Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. um, stand out there, be the hawker, get everybody to come over, and we always have dogs with us there. And come groom a horse, come brush a dog. That's right. Um, adults who are looking could help you perhaps to transport or to be with animals. Possibly. When you go to some of these places. Absolutely. Depending on who they are. And of course, between the, the, the two, I'm making your wish list, and my wish list is volunteers <laughs> and dollars. Is there anything else on it? No, no. really no. not. Okay, that's, so those are the two. That sums it up. Volunteers and dollars, and we are now out of time, so tell people how they can reach you. You can reach us through Adventures with Bailey, B A I L E Y dot org. Um, and there's just a contact me button at the bottom. Terrific. If you can help financially, physically, whatever, this is an incredible, incredible woman who's doing really great things. And it'd be a great place to get involved. Susan, thank you thank for you, having Sherry. us. I appreciate it. We are now going to take you to Save a Pet and show you some of the dogs and cats available there for adoption.